this column has come out of the printer, and it's part of a 16 square meter room. More than two and a half meters high, it weighs 11 tons and is the latest innovation in the world of architecture. It's made of artificial sandstone, and it has ornamentation reminiscent of a Gothic cathedral. Michael Hansmeier and Benjamin Dillenburger from the Technical University in Zurich are the brains behind the creation, which they call the digital grotesque. We've seen it in the past, in the pre-modern -pre days, um, that architecture was created with an incredible level of detail. If you look at Baroque churches, if you look at um, the Rococo, and so on. But it took an incredible amount of time. It took artisans years and years and years um, to, to create something like this. They completed their room in just a few months, using an algorithm to calculate every angle and curve and to create shapes that possibly couldn't be done by hand. The 3D printer is indeed breaking new boundaries. Precision often presents limitations, but using this technique means we no longer face restrictions in terms of geometry. Using the 3D printer, it takes just two days to apply the layers of fine sand. They are then stuck to the artificial stone. Once it has set, any excess sand is removed from the mold and can be reused. The team has assembled the component parts to make a solid walk-in room. Each part can be highly individual at, at no extra cost. So it can be highly adapted to local requirements, to local tastes, to local preferences. Um, in, in the past, you've been able to do that, but it's been incredibly expensive. Architects in Amsterdam are going a step further. On March 1st, they will begin the construction of the first printed building. It's a canal-side house made of plastic. A specially designed machine will print the component parts on site, and they will then be assembled in much the same way as a toy house. 3D printing, that's like speed and materials. At the moment, with this pace of growth in the, in the mega cities, the current construction techniques is not sufficient enough. And maybe that's why we also believe that 3D printing can actually uh, make a big difference in 5, 10, 20 years' time. Other European architects are also developing concepts for printed houses. The Amsterdam-based company Universe Architecture is planning what it calls a landscape house from artificial sandstone. Foster and Partner are working with the European Space Agency to create a moon base that would be printed on site using moon sand. The London company Softkill Design has an equally innovative project. The structure of their building imitates bone growth. What it means for architecture is that we no longer have to think in terms of standardized or two-dimensional elements. Glass walls and facade panels are already features of modern architecture. But what we have here is a return to three-dimensional, more complex components, which are not merely designed to serve a functional purpose. The new technology paves the way for more playful shapes, as in the case of the digital grotesque. Michael Hansmeier and Benjamin Dillenberger are currently continuing work on their room, adding even more details. They want to prove that decorative facades or walls do not have to cost a fortune. For a long time, it's been a luxury. If you think back over the past hundreds or thousands of years, ornament has some, been something, at least three-dimensional ornament, for, for kings, for queens, and has always involved lots of people slaving away or at least working very intensely over years and years and years and years. Um, now it's become not, not more democratic, but definitely more accessible. To date, the artificial sandstone is not strong enough to withstand wind and weather, but the architects are convinced it's only a matter of time before it will be. And when it does, people will be able to live however they wish. <laughs>